Good morning, everybody. Thank you all for coming out. It's good to see all your smiles, ready to praise God this morning. Um, let's read, go into the bulletin and read some announcements. Um, the first one, Wednesday at 7.30, all the youth and young adults are invited for Bible study here at the church. And then Thursday at 8 a.m., there's a um, church, Linda Vista School is inviting us all, all the parents and kids to uh, Grand Chapel. That will happen October 27 at 8 a.m. Also here in the church, there will be a special speaker. And then Friday at 7.30 to 8.45 is jam here at the church for the junior youth. Um, all the boards and committees are asked to forward the new chair, vice chair, secretary, and treasurer to Ruben. So please do that. November 6th is a Thanksgiving. That's two weeks from now. There is a Thanksgiving program happening here at the church, a joint service at 9.30. So let's remember that, 9.30 a.m. Um, the mission board has their list of things that they want to do the, to disperse on the Thanksgiving offering this year. I'll let you go over that. And then the ministerial is also asking for everybody that is willing to bring 
of non-perishable items. They can bring them forward here as an offering. And then after the service, they disperse them to the needy. German evening services are also coming up, October 30 to November 3. And then on Wednesday is in between those dates. That will be an evening for youth only. Um, Region 6 gathering, a big party that our church is having, all the different churches, EMMC churches are having a big gathering happening November 11 to 13. Um, next Sunday is a deadline to sign up for that. This insert here has a little schedule on what they're all planning there. They would like everybody to sign up, and if you are planning to stay for meals, then there will be a cost, but if you are coming just for the programs, then it is free. You will just need to pay if you're staying for meals. Um, this flower here, it's not in the bulletin. Stephen and Amy had a baby boy, Shane, born October 15. Let's um, pray for them, and may God bless them as they teach and train him for his ways. Uh, also, another one there under prayer. Jeff and Marie are still in Mexico. They had a surgery with Noah. It seemed to all be going very good, so let's continue to pray for his full recovery so that they can come home soon. Anything that I missed that needs to be announced? Let's um, pray before we continue into singing. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this wonderful morning. Nice sunshine, cool breeze. It's such a refreshing day to take a break from our normal busy lives and take a break for you. I pray that this morning would be a blessing to you and an encouragement to each other here that we can have a blessed morning this service here. In your name we pray, amen. I would just like to read a quick verse before we go into singing. Psalms 113, verse 3. From the rising of the sun to the, to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. So let's praise God this morning. If you can't do it in singing, some people are not singers, then find a different way to do it. But it's very important to do it. Go out and thank God for the creation. Let's praise God this morning, worship team. Good morning and welcome here this morning. Um, as Ernie was saying, we, we come together to worship God, and I pray that this will be just as much a blessing for you as it is for me to sing and praise God.
from the rising to the setting sun, that exactly is the song I had chosen for this morning, we will proclaim that God is faithful. <clears throat> God and King. For He is good, He is above all things. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. your this is the day the Lord has made regular song. It's got a new rendition to it and it talks about different ways that we can praise God <coughs> in this day. This is the day that the Lord has made we will rejoice as we lift his name this is the day that the lord has made come and rejoice we will rejoice and be glad in it whether the sun will shine whether the skies will rain i know that you are good and this is the day you've made whether in life or death whether in joy or pain i know the truth it makes and this is the day you made this is the day that the lord has made we will rejoice Rejoice and be glad in it. Now I can walk in 
day of grace. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice.
from the inside out to praise and honor our holy God. Thank you, worship team. It was a very good job. After a wonderful worship like that is where we can get a little glimpse of what heaven will be like. We can do that all day long. Um, children are dismissed for a children's church. For anybody that's new here, there should be somebody back there to explain if your children are interested in going. Ushers, do you want to get ready for offering? Let's ask for God's blessing on that. Dear Jesus, I thank you for this morning, and I thank you that you blessed us, 
that we can come here. You bless us, with, most of us, with health. I pray for those that are not as healthy, and I thank you that we can work and provide. I pray that you would give us willing hearts this morning to give back to you. And um, I pray that whoever disperses it, that they can have leading from you to see where it's best fit. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you for your gifts. We'll give over the rest of the time to Pastor Henry. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. It is good to be here this morning again. And if there is anyone that is here for the first time, welcome to our church. Uh, I'm glad that you came out. And uh, the past uh, few weeks, I've been, uh, uh, we've been, I've been preaching out of Philippians, and today I want to continue in Philippians. Uh, today we're going to, going to look into chapter 3. But before we go there, let's bow our head for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before your mighty throne of grace. And Father, I thank you that we can come there boldly. And Father, I thank you that your grace, your love, and your spirit is with us this morning. And Father, I pray that uh, your spirit will, will work in and through me. And uh, Father, I pray that, uh, that everyone that is here, everyone that hears my voice, Lord, I pray that, uh, that their hearts would be open to hear from you, Lord. Father God, I thank you that, uh, that you love us so much and that you care about us. You care about our, our every need. And Father, I thank you for each one that came out this morning, and I pray that, that we'll receive a blessing from you as we already have through singing. So Father, I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Who has heard from God this week? All right, there's hands going up. Did God give you a word for, for our church? You don't want to raise your hand because I might ask you to come and share it with us, right? <laughs> but uh, I don't have this in my notes, but I felt very strongly to ask that this morning. Is God speaking to you? 
Is God giving you a word for our church? And if not for our church, then for your personal lives. Are you hearing him? You know, the Lord spoke to me this week, and one thing that he said to me was, I speak to your heart and you destroy it with your mind. And that was, that was powerful to me. We do that very often. God speaks to our heart. Reason with that. We try to make sense. Okay, God, is this really from you? Like, would you really? Like, really? And then we destroy that here. And we say, no, that was, those were just my thoughts. Very often we destroy what God speaks to us. I, I at least do. Maybe none of you do, but I do. And I, I learned from that this week. That I want to, when I hear something, I want to not, uh, I want to take that as he speaks it to me. I want to take it uh, as that and not uh, go on destroying it with my own comprehension or with my own, this has to make sense kind of thing. So, but anyways, back to our, uh, to uh, Philippians here. Like I said, we, we have been speaking out of Philippians the past few weeks. In chapter 1, we learned uh, Paul urged us to live as if God is in control of our lives. Very often we say, yeah, God is in control. And it's very different to say that uh, than to live that. If we live as if God is in control, it's very different than just to say that. And then in chapter 2, the first 18 verses, uh, we learned that Paul says that uh, we are supposed to have the same mindset as that of Christ Jesus. And uh, Christ Jesus came into this world not to be served, but rather to serve. And he was obedient to, the, uh, to his father uh, all the way through his life and, and even unto death. So uh, we learned that in the first 18 verses, and then in the, uh, from verse 19 through 30, we learned uh, that uh, we, we looked at the lives of uh, Timothy and uh, Epaphroditus, and uh, they were our example in being compassionate, faithful, and uh, available uh, for, for the Spirit and for God to work in and through us. And today we want to look at chapter 3, where Paul uh, gives us uh, his life as a model, as an example. He says uh, that uh, to live as he has lived. And uh, <clears throat> Paul went through uh, many different uh, uh, things. Uh, he, he encountered hardship uh, many times. He was in prison many times. And uh, uh, Jesus actually said himself, he says that uh, they, they persecuted him, they persecute me, Jesus says, and they, therefore they will persecute you if you follow me. And uh, Paul says in Second uh, Timothy, he says, uh, all who desire to uh, live godly lives in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. So we can uh, expect that there will be hard times coming uh, our way. And in the book of Acts, uh, we read, um, sorry, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Uh, the 17th verse of chapter 3, Paul says, Join together in following my examples, uh, brother and uh, sisters, as, uh, and just as you have used as as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. So he says that uh, we can follow his example in following Christ. And those that, that follow Christ the way Paul did, we can use that as an example. So in the book of Acts, we, we learned uh, already uh, that uh, Paul started uh, the Philippian church by going there on his first uh, missionary uh, uh, journey. And uh, he got to Philippians and they throw him in jail. So, and... Uh, what did Paul do while he was in jail? He sang praises to the Lord. And, uh, and re uh, God responded to that by freeing him from prison. And, God, and, and through that, the Philippian uh, jailer, he came to, to know the Lord, and uh, him and his whole family were baptized because of Paul's example, because of what Paul did. So the Philippians knew what kind of a life Paul had lived. So we may not have been thrown in jail ever for uh, following Jesus. We may not have ever been beaten for following Jesus. But we may have encountered different hardships. This week I was speaking to a man. He said he hadn't seen his family on, and uh, I believe he said in close to two years because of his faith. He wasn't allowed to go see his family anymore. So there is uh, people that, that suffer uh, the loss of family because of their faith. And there's people that, uh, that suffer different loss because of their faith in Christ Jesus. We don't just f go with what the world throws at us. So we, we suffer in some areas because of our faith. So even if we haven't suffered a prison or we haven't uh, been beaten or, or anything like that, but maybe we can identify in different areas with what Paul is talking about here. 
the Christian life isn't always the easiest life. So, and uh, I've entitled my message uh, today, uh, Learning How to Live uh, a Life of Loss. So, and, uh, pr some of you are probably thinking, well, what, is, uh, what, what do you mean by living a life of loss? And that's what we're going to go into. Paul talks about uh, a life of loss. So, uh, let's read from uh, verse 1 through verse 3. It says, further, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is as a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs, those evildoers, the mutilators of the flesh, for it is we who are the circumcision, we who serve God by his Spirit, who boast in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh. Verse 2 First, he, uh, the first uh, uh, verse one, he says, "It's no trouble for me to write to you about these things again." So it sounds like he's talked to them about this again. But then in verse two, I found this kind of harsh. He, he says, "Watch out for those dogs, those evil doers." I was like, "Paul, who are you talking about? What are you saying?" He's calling people dogs, those evil doers, and he's talking talking about the religious people. He says, "Those that that come and want to bring in the, uh, the false gospel." And uh, there is many false gospels uh, now in today's day, but back in Paul's day, it was very common for them to hear, if you want to be a follower of Jesus Christ, you have to first submit to the law of Moses. And Paul was very well aware of what the law of Moses was. He was very educated in the law of Moses. And now he calls them those dogs, those evildoers. And, uh, and that sounds kind of harsh, doesn't it? But uh, then he goes on in verse 3, and he says, uh, for we are the, we are the, one that, the ones that have been circumcised. We are the ones that have the circumcision in heart, at heart. Because he says, we serve God by his spirit. See, the difference here is uh, the, the law was all in the flesh. It was, you, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this. It was all the do's and don'ts. And he says, now we do it in the spirit. And he says, we boast in nothing but Christ Jesus. He says, we do not have any confidence in our flesh. So that's the first uh, thing that we want to look at, uh, where uh, to be careful for those uh, um, for false gospels, fa false religions. To be careful for uh, uh, about the, or for those. But then let's read in verse uh, four to seven. Uh, Paul explains how he he was uh, brought up in this. He was uh, uh, he he grew up as a as a very religious man. Let me just read it before I explain it all here. He says. Uh, Though I myself have reason for such confidence, if someone else thinks they have reason to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. But whatever, was, but whatever were gains to me, I now consider them loss for the sake of Christ." So whatever he considered gains to him, he now considers loss for the sake of Christ. And I don't know about you, but I've read this portion of Scripture many times. I've looked at it many times, and to me it was always, well, yeah, Paul, he had reason because he was, he was very, uh, uh, very eager to persecute the church at first, but then later on he met Jesus and he changed his life completely. And I thought about this. How can I relate to this? How can we as a church relate to this? And I want to be very careful with what I say next. I've prayed and thought about this a lot, how I want to say this. Because Paul says even the good things, that later on he, he will go into this a bit more, but even the good things that he had done, they were now considered a, as lost. They were no good anymore. And I thought about this. Our church, I like to always make things personal. Our church has uh, been here for 60-some years. And there's a lot of good things that have come from our church. There's a lot of good things happening in our community, in our church. But like Paul said, if anyone has confidence, has reason to have confidence in the flesh, it is I, because he, he was circumcised on the eighth day and he was uh, from the people of Israel. He was uh, uh, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. He, he had all the right uh, steps. He was... Uh, he had done all the right things. But some of you, 
your parents brought you up here when you were small babies, and they dedicated uh, your lives to the Lord. You grew up, and you went to Sunday school, and you got baptized, and you got married. And now some of you are saying, but my life has been dry all my life. The gospel has been dry. And I thought about this. If we do all these things, these good things, parents mean these things. They, they want the best when they bring their children up here to dedicate them to the Lord. And when the children, uh, when, the, when later on when you get baptized and you get married and all that, you want the uh, best things. But maybe, what if you, the Holy Spirit has never touched your heart, if it's all just head knowledge? And you have followed these steps, the exact steps. These are the requirements of the church. This is what we need to do. I've even taught Sunday school. I've sang in worship. I've done all these things. And then one day the Holy Spirit hits you the way it hit Paul. And Paul says, all of that was nothing. Everything that I did was nothing. It, it kind of hit home for me. And I'm sure it will, probably will hit home for more of you. Let's read a little further, verse 8. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage. I may, that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having, my, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that, which, uh, that, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. He says, what is more, I consider everything a lost. And Paul had done some good things in his life. I'm sure he had. But he says, I consider everything a lost. If he compares that with the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ, just knowing Jesus Christ. See, a lot of people, they go all, through all their life knowing of Jesus Christ, but not knowing Jesus Christ. There's a big difference in that. Knowing of Jesus Christ is no, difference than, uh, no different than knowing of the prime minister of Belize. But if you know Jesus Christ, and Paul says all of this is through, the, uh, through his uh, faith in Jesus Christ, and it's done in the Spirit. It's not done in the flesh. This is done in, through the Spirit. And now my question to you is, do you consider knowing Jesus Christ to be greater than anything else in your life? Is knowing Jesus Christ greater than serving in church? I asked myself this, uh, that this week many times. Is knowing Jesus Christ greater to me than being the pastor of the church? Is knowing Jesus Christ greater to me than my family? And in some of these areas, I had to uh, say to myself, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it is. And back to what I said before, uh, we have to be very careful as Christians that we don't uh, get to a place where we're comfortable. We may have gone through difficult times, but we get to a place where we're comfortable. Our church is 60-some years old, and we've figured it out. We've, uh, we've done things that, uh, so long a, a certain way, and it works, so let's just keep it that way. And I'm not saying that, I'm, uh, w that I want to change things. I, I don't know of anything that I want to change, but I'm just saying that we've figured things out. We've figured God out. So... We are comfortable in our religious faith. And we don't seek to know God more and more. Let's read a little bit further here. Verse 10, 10 and 11. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of His resurrection and the participation in His suffering, becoming like Him in His death, and so somehow attaining the resurrection from the dead. Verse 10, I want to know Christ. And I thought to myself, Paul, 
if anyone should know Christ, it's you. And you say, he plainly says, I want to know Christ. And I thought to myself, if, if this man that, had, that met Jesus on the road to Damascus, now later on he says, I want to know Christ. And then he goes on and he says, the power. Oh, so there's a power with it. There's a power that comes with knowing Christ, the, uh, to know the power of his resurrection and the participation in his suffering. So I don't know where you're at in your life. Maybe you have come through some hardships in your life. Maybe your, your childhood wasn't the greatest. Maybe you were abused. Maybe whatever it was. And you've finally gotten to a, a place where you say, okay, well, life is good here. I'm comfortable. So I'm at the right church. They sing my kind of music. Uh, the preacher, for the most part, preaches what I like to hear. So I'm comfortable. So let, let's keep it at that. We, we got things figured out. And Paul says, no, it's not good enough for me. I want to know more. I want to know more of Christ, and I want to share in his suffering. And I want to, how does he say it here? Attaining to the resurrection from the dead. See, I used to always read that, and I thought, okay, well, yeah, one day I'm going to die, and then I'm going to be raised and go to heaven. Now, I, I believe that part of that may be speaking about that, because that will be the fullness. Uh, the, the, but I believe that while we're here on earth, we're called to die to ourselves and to be raised with Christ, right? So perhaps Paul is talking more about that here than our final resurrection to heaven. So are you happy with where your life is at? Or do you want to know the power that raised Jesus Christ? I was challenged uh, this week uh, when I started Philippians. The first Sunday I said that I'm not, not satisfied with, uh, uh, with where my life is at. I want to know more of the supernatural. I want to know more. And this week as I was studying into this, it, uh, it seemed to me like that the Lord was asking me, do you really want that? Do you mean what you say? And I do, I do mean what I say. I really want that. At what price that will come, I don't know. Because it talks here about suffering and, uh, and to share in, the fel uh, share in the, sorry, the fellowship of sharing in the suffering of Jesus. So Jesus suffered. So does that mean that I'm going to need to suffer in some areas? Perhaps. Dying to ourselves isn't that easy. See, I want to challenge you here this morning that you don't just come to church and hope that this will get you through the week. Because then it has become a religious act. Your desire, our desire should be all week long, Jesus, more of you and less of me. I want to know you more. I want to know more of the power I want to know more of the power of Jesus Christ. Let's read verse 12. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I pressed, press on to take hold of that for which God, uh, Jesus Christ has taken hold of me. I want you to take note of that word, that. Let me read that again. But I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus has ho uh, taken hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself, myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind me and straining toward, uh, forward toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which uh, God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. What is Paul saying here? He's, he's uh, basically, uh, plainly speaking, he says, I don't have it all figured out yet. I don't know it all. But he says, I know that God has taken hold of me for a reason. And it sounds like he's not even quite sure what that reason is here. But he says, one thing I do, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ has taken hold of me. What is that in your life? That, whatever that is, 
may be different from your life to my life or to your life. It may be very different from our lives. But what is it? What is the purpose that uh, God has for our lives here on earth? It could very well be that you are doing what God called you to do. I think that little word, that, you should all mark it in your Bible. Because uh, that one word, just four letters, that really uh, spoke to me this week. What is that? Lord, what, is, what, what did you get a hold of me for? What is that? And it is to know him more. And, and here we can follow Paul's example because he always said more of Jesus. He always wanted to know more of Christ, more of Christ. Like I said before, there's a lot of good things that are happening, that have happened through our church and that are happening through our church. But if they're just done in the flesh, then they benefit you nothing. They have to be done in the spirit. When we're born again, we're, we're, we are to leave all the old behind, everything. And very often, people get born again and they leave some of the old behind but they want to keep a lot of the old with them. They want to go further. And that, uh, we have, it's, it's a process. More of Christ, less of me. We lose more of ourselves and we gain more of Christ. <clears throat> I sometimes go through, I don't know if they're really anxieties or panic attacks or whatever it is, but sometimes a, the, there's a fear that comes over me and I feel like uh, if I'm speaking to people, what if I'll mislead them? What if I will say stuff that isn't grounded in the Bible? What if I will say stuff or people will hear it wrong and I will mislead people? And it is something that very often scares me a whole lot and, and uh, I go before the Lord, uh, very often I go before the Lord and I say, uh, I don't have that much knowledge. I don't, I'm not that smart. Can I have please more of you? Will the Holy Spirit teach me more so that I can speak the truth from the Word of God? And my prayer is that for, for everyone here today, and my challenge is that to you, uh, throughout this week, ask God, did I do a lot of these things in the flesh? I did. I served in the church in the flesh for some time. And I still do sometimes. Because there, we, there's always a battle between the flesh and the spirit. And it's okay if we've done that, but if we, when we realize that, then we, we uh, uh, repent and we move forward, right? Because we want more of the spirit. So this week I challenge you, Listen to the Lord. Listen to see if God will speak to your heart and then don't, don't destroy it with your mind. When God gives you a word, whether it is for yourself, your spouse, your children, the church, whatever it is, do with it as God speaks to you, as God wants you to do, uh, do with it. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you and God, I thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your love. I thank you for the Spirit. And Father, my prayer is for myself and each one here that we would all have that same mindset, that same attitude of, as, as that of Christ Jesus. And that we would all be like Paul, less of us and more of you. Father, I pray that for each one here, Lord, I pray that you will speak to us. And Father, I pray that we will hear your voice, that we will listen to it, not just hear it, but that we will listen to it and that we will uh, walk in obedience of uh, whatever, wherever you call us. Father God, I pray that your blessing will be on this, uh, on this church, on these people. I pray that you'll protect them and guide them. And Lord, I just uh, rejoice in you, knowing that you listen to our prayers, you listen to us, you care about us. And Father, I pray that your blessing will go with us as we go from here. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much for coming out. May you have a blessed day. We are dismissed.